Hello and welcome back. In the last video, we saw that we used the same number of elements for Ansys and Abacus, but Abacus gave us a really faster uh, CPU time. Now, we compare what we, what we did wrong or what could go wrong. For example, we could use the different number of uh, the, the different number of elements, different number of uh, for friction coefficient. It's 0.25, and where is my? Yeah, it's 0.25. Same. Now we could we check the mesh and uh, mesh. Now we I, I do have sixteen thousand elements and the number of nodes is twenty thousand nine hundred and ten. But my mesh here has sixteen thousand elements and seventy eight thousand five hundred and thirty eight nodes. Now we might wonder what went wrong here or what is the difference. So one thing is to check for which which elements are there sixteen thousand that created these, these many nodes. And in Abacus, it, it can tell you which elements are here. For example, element type is C3D8R, which is hexahedral and linear, and with 16,000 elements. Now, which one did ANSYS use? So, we can check here. Yeah, solid 186. Now, solid 186 is a higher order 3D 20 node solid element that exhibits quadratic displacement behavior. Now, we need to check. We have a linear order here for elements, and that can and that can be the reason why we have different nodes. Now, this mesh could be entirely different, and uh, we we could be comparing apples with oranges. Now, there are two things to change this. For example, I can change this in Abacus from linear to quadratic, and in Ansys I can change it to from quadratic to linear, and then I can compare both. So in Ansys, its element control is manual; its default is program control, and in Mesh, its its program control, its default option is program control, and we can switch it into linear and quadratic. And in Abacus, we can, oops, that's, that's assign element types, and that is standard, linear, and quadratic. So we can switch it on and off. Which one do we need? So, so in the Abacus, we have 104 seconds CPU time for linear elements. And in Ansys, we have 31 seconds of 31 seconds of CPU time. That is for uh, linear elements. Now, it could go against our initial hypothesis, or somebody might have been alluding to the conclusion that uh, Abacus is faster or Ansys is faster. Uh, but we cannot check out like this. What, what caused this difference? For example, we could ch check what is the difference between the quadratic elements in CPU performance. For example, it's 129. Now we check out. Wow, it's 1,082 seconds for Abacus. Now this is a huge difference and we cannot go blindly believing that ANSYS is faster or Abacus is faster without checking the results. And we go to the results and then we see that the stresses are way too high. 3770. Now that is huge. And in ANSYS it's 3402. This is again very huge amount of stress. And it's it's beyond plastic collapse and whatever. Now it's not linear elastic, so our entire analysis is wrong. And another thing that we can check is the contact pressure. 
So the contact pressure in ANSYS is 923, whereas in Abacus it's 1715. So now that now that's almost twice as much uh, as compared to the ANSYS. And the reason for it is that ANSYS does a lot of things automatically for you. And there could be so much refining done that we, we don't know. But like going blindly with the settings, that can lead you to false conclusions or assumptions that you can check. And another thing that we can check is the contact stress. The contact stress is 398 to minus 398 on one side, and then and the other one is 186. Now in ANSYS, it's 230. Now, this can be this can be really confusing if you don't know what you're doing, or if somebody thinks that just setting up an just setting up a problem in ANSYS or Abacus will lead him to results because we use the same settings, same mesh size, direct solver, nonlinear, uh, large nonlinear analysis with large reflections, uh, but still we have different results. And what could be different? What could go wrong, right? If you don't know the math. So even the CPU time is huge, like 129 and a thousand. Oops, that was the different one. Yeah, monitor. Yeah, a thousand and eighty-two. That that's almost like ten times higher. But from from here we can see that our our model we that we chose for linear elastic that that didn't really go well. the The entire assumption was wrong, and the entire solution was wrong. So, before we blindly conclude to FEA results or, or, or think that FEA is going to lead me some, to somewhere without having proper thought about this, the problem, the real physical problem, we're going to have end up having this kind of solution. Thank you very much and have a great day.